Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to use the date diff function in order to uh, figure out some information about my database. And the database I'm using here is a mock database that I certainly will make available to you. You'll find a link to it in the description uh, for the video. But I've got a database for a, for, a, for a fake video store. Let me just give you a quick little overview here. So I've got five tables. I do have a table that keeps track of uh, a few hundred movies. I've got a table that keeps track of about 1,500 customers. I've got a table that keeps track of actors. I think of about three or 400 actors. And then I've got a table which keeps track, to, keeps track of which actors were in which movie. And this isn't complete, or there could be some mistakes, but that's the basic purpose. And then last but not least, I have this video rentals table, which keeps track of customer rental transactions for the past uh, four months. And I think there's about 8,000 transactions. So what I want to do now is I want to use a query to find out which customer rental transactions were more than one week more, more than one week because those customers are going to have a uh, a penalty a late penalty so uh, I don't I do have some reports but that's not too critical I've got my tables I'm gonna jump over to my create ribbon and query design now the tables that I'm gonna involve in this particular query I'm gonna get my customers table because I need my customers name and ID and I want the movies table because I want the title of the movie and of course I need my video rentals table because that will show when they checked a particular movie out and returned it so I've got these three tables that I want to use as part of my query so all three tables need to be up in the design grid so the fields that I want a little bit subjective here but I want my customers ID I want their last name and I want their first name then I want the title of the movie that they checked out and then I want the checkout date and the return date so I've got some basic information no criteria so if I were to run this I would expect to have about 8,000 records and there it is 8,000 records and I knew that because I know that I have 8,000 rental transactions so I've got all transactions but I'm not necessarily interested in all transactions I'm mostly interested in transactions that that lasted longer than one week so back to the drawing board I'm gonna jump back over to the design view for my query on my design grid here I'm gonna scroll one to the right and I wanna put some information in this new field here so I'm gonna right click and zoom to give myself room to work and when you're creating a new calculated query in fact let me change my font here a bit too so it's even bigger for you to see I'm gonna give the name of my field my first one just as a dry run I'll go ahead and do um, days late okay that should be fine actually and then a colon and then we have to do our calculation the function that I'm gonna be working with here is date diff to find the difference between two dates and there's a few parameters that we're gonna need the first parameter is the values that we're going to want in here and there's a few different ways you can write this uh, for instance if I put in D for quotes this is gonna give me the number of days in between let's try this first comma and then I need my first date which will be my checkout date notice I'm putting that in square brackets whenever you refer to an existing database field or table field put that in square bracket brackets uh, comma and then I will put in uh, my return date alrighty and I know it's wrapping around here but if my font was a little bit smaller you'd see this is really just one line and this is my my function here alright and I think we're ready to go this will in theory determine how many days in between the checkout date and the return date I'll click OK just go ahead and rerun this real quick and, and in fact days late is kind of misleading I can just fix that I'll say days out for rerun that so now it's a little bit more accurate and we can see that for instance a uh, Russ McNeil customer MC 0116 they had the movie train spotting checked it out on January 20th they returned it on January 26 so they had the movie out for six days within the week-long period whereas Heidi Larson 
had the wild the wild bunch checked out from april 1st to april 10th she had that movie out for nine days therefore her account should end up having a uh, penalty okay but our goal for this video is really just to use the state diff function and so far so good now we could uh, go ahead and we could figure out all right well i'm interested in days out that are greater than seven go ahead and rerun this and now i'm down to just let calculate here 1793 so 1793 customers have had a movie out for more than seven days therefore these are the folks that should be getting the penalty more than seven days so there we go so now we'll know exactly which customers had their movies out for a little bit too long and then you could apply a, uh, a late charge to those particular customers whether it was the rental rate again or maybe it's just an extra five dollars or something like that so that's the date diff function let me just jump back over here to design view the zoom in so you can see that again so the name of your new field the date diff function the parameters really here I've got D for days in quotes that's a string value and then I've got one of my dates and then the other date 